9. 1. 1 operators of Reddit. What were the most creative ways that people asked for help when they couldn't explicitly say it? I've managed to question a caller by using my console to display the keys they pressed because they couldn't talk because they were afraid they'd be heard. I.e. If you're upstairs, press 1. Is anyone else home 1 for yes, 0 for no. Worked out pretty well. Another time I had someone talk to me as if I were their mother and had to work responses into the conversation. I did my best to help feed them lines to keep it going undiscovered. Elaborate on the second one please. I worked 9, 1, 1 up until a few months ago. I received a call from someone who asked me how I was doing and I originally thought it was a prank but then I asked if there was an emergency. She quickly said yes. So I had to ask questions in a way that she could answer as if she was talking on the phone to one of her friends. The hardest part was getting a description of the subject in the house and her address. She ended up saying something along the lines of, Silly, don't you remember I live at 1234 Second Saint? Not First Avenue ended up being a domestic and she was pretty beat up but thankfully she got help that night. Me. 9. 1. 1. What's your emergency? Them. Hi. Mom. How are you? Me. Are you in direct danger? Them. Yeah. But I'm doing alright. Mom. How are you? Me. Can you verify that your address is the one that popped up on my screen? Them. Yeah. That sounds good. Looking forward to dad visiting soon. Wish you could make it out here. 2. At this point I'm sending everything I can to their location. Police. Fire. M's. Me. Help is on the way. Mom. I want you to stay on the phone with me until I get there. Them. I'll try, but don't know if I can. Mom. Might not be able to afford it. Me. I understand. Stay with me as long as you can. We talked for about 30 seconds more before the police got to her location. Someone's crazy ex showed up at their place of work with a gun, demanding to see said ex. This woman at the front desk had the wits and calm to fake phone call to her mom while talking to me. The 9. 1. 1 operator. When the police got there, he saw them pull up, walked out and peacefully surrendered. I will remember that call and how calm and brave that woman was for the rest of my life. You, Mr. or Mom are a very valuable contribution to the human race. Not my story but, it was a 9. 1. 1 hang up. On call back the person answered Domino's Pizza how can I help you? The dispatcher then asked you call 9. 1. 1. Did you have an emergency? The person says yes we have specials today. The dispatcher's a little skeptical and thinks that the business might have called an accident which does happen. The dispatcher goes to ask if they are being robbed. The store clerk says that's right we have a 2 pizza special going right now. The dispatcher enters the call but continues to answer questions while the police are driving. Now in a situation like this you're going to ask yes or no questions as it directs them to a very clear response on the other end. We have to ask for the race clothing description so we know we're looking for. The Domino's employee says yes we can put black olives on both pizzas. The dispatcher then goes to ask what color shirt and pants the first one is wearing. The employee says for the first pizza you want both halves completely with black olives. The employee then says and on the second pizza you want black olives and blue cheese. The dispatcher then goes to ask about the weapon if it's a gun or knife. The employee said first one. Dispatcher then asks how many of them have weapons. Employee says only the first pizza. The dispatcher then asked if they arrived in car or on foot. Employee says that special is for carry out only. I'm sure there are quite a few details missing but I heard that story years and years ago from a fellow co-worker who is now retired. I'm not a 9. 1. 1 operator. But I did make a call like this and the operator responded very well. I'll do my best to remember exactly what happened but my wording is paraphrased at best. I currently work in the city parks near a high traffic bar street. One Saturday morning at 6am, a drunk patron walked over to me and started hitting on me really aggressively. He backed me into my booth and started grabbing me to kiss me. I froze and couldn't escape. We have park cell phones that can contact the other workers at other lakes. So I managed to text my co-worker call 9, 1, 1, to my lake. Immediately, she called 9, 1, 1 and they called me. But I couldn't talk clearly because I didn't want to alarm the guy. I told him it was my co-worker at the other lake and that she couldn't unlock a chain. Here's the rough conversation. 
9-1-1. We received a message that you needed help. Did you need help? Me. Yep. That sounds about right. 9-1-1. What's going on? Me. I'm not sure. Were you able to unlock it? 9-1-1. Can you tell us anything? Me. No. Not at all. There aren't any boats on the lake yet. 9-1-1. Is there someone there preventing you from talking? Me. For sure. I wish there wasn't. 9-1-1. Are you in danger? Me. I can't really tell. But the sunrise is beautiful. Wish you could come see what I'm seeing. 9-1-1. Okay. We're sending help now. Please stay on the line. I started talking to the man like my co-worker needed help while I held the phone in my hand. Within minutes, several police cars arrived and grabbed the man and pinned him to the ground and cuffed him. He looked me dead in the eyes and said, I can't believe you called the freaking cops. He had a knife on him. I'm so glad that 9 one, one operator didn't hang up on me because I answered her question so weird. But she did an awesome job, as did my co-worker and the police. Also, the police let me sit in the front seat and they let me goof around with the spotlight and they bickered jokingly with each other, which made me laugh. They were pretty awesome overall. Baby elephants. There is number 100%. The best would be to text someone and have them call us, but that isn't always possible either. Sometimes darling and just lay the phone down so we can hear, then try to say what's going on. Why are you hitting me why do you want to kill me? Trust me we listen to an open line like it's an FBI wiretap. If it's a landline, we will get an address. If it's a cell phone you are at the mercy of how well your cell phone provider pinpoints your GPS location. Cell phones with no active service and only call 9, 1, 1, are less accurate than one with service. If at all possible try to give hints to your location. You said it would be better when we move to ABC Street. Call the other pair I own by name. Pull the mad mama first middle last thing. Sometimes we are familiar with the person. And now where to look. Anything at all helps. Why we are listening we are doing searches on anything we hear that is identifiable. Have officers driving the general location it pinged to. We try our very best to find you. Piggybacking. If your carrier allows Wi-Fi calling, set your location for emergency services. You can do it in the settings. 9. 1. One operator here. I had a caller who I could tell was in distress from her breathing. As I kept talking she kept shushing me. I asked if she could tap on her phone once for yes and twice for no. As I asked her yes and no questions I was able to use the GPS on her phone to get her location and decipher that someone was in her house and she was hiding. Police arrived on scene and it was her ex who had a gun and was looking for her. 9 years and that was one of the most craziest calls. Those stick with you. Man, I just posted in a different thread about how frustrated I've been with how flippant and caring my dispatchers have all been. Then I come here and see you all figuring out how to use Morse code and crap to help people. The world needs more of people like you. And your industry needs a million more of you. Thanks for doing a hard job. I heard an indistinct tussling and then open line with heavy breathing. Then the line went dead. I tried to call back and the call was immediately dismissed. Worried I was giving away that whomever had the phone was calling 9. 1. 1. I didn't call back. I waited on another call that never came. We often got butt dials but something about this felt different. There was no arguing or voices other than the breathing. While I waited for a call back, I looked up the owner of the phone. I called another contact number for the owner. The woman who answered said it was a phone she bought for her daughter and that she was worried about her BC she didn't trust her boyfriend. I immediately did a location search on her coordinates, which can be wildly off, especially in highly populated areas. Thankfully, it came to an industrial area with only one house in the area. I sent officers. The officers keyed up and told me they went to the door and a man answered. There was no female in sight. I then received another 9. 1. One open line call and I could hear distant wind noises so I thought she was maybe outside. Coordinates were still the same location. I asked the officers to check around the premises BC I had a bad feeling. They found her tied and gagged to a tree in the backyard. This is by far the scariest one in these comments. I was in a situation where I was with a suicidal person. He had a gun and it was awful and I still have PTSD about the whole situation. 
Anyway, I was on the phone with 9, 1, 1, but he thought I'd hung up. I kept the phone in my hand, but turned down so that he couldn't see the display screen. I kept loudly pleading with him not to do it, all the while throwing hints into the conversation. He and I lived about 30 miles apart and twice. I was able to work his address into the conversation by saying something to the effect of I've driven all the way to his address every week to be with you. Please don't do it etc. etc. The police did not get there in time, but they were able to hear his address and arrived about 3 minutes afterward. I'm very sorry the situation happened to you. However I don't think there was a better way to handle it than how you already did. You act in a pretty clever way. On my favorite murder, a murder podcast about true crime, they talk about a woman who was taken captive by someone on some heavy drugs. He had killed her cousin while they were in a car, and he shot the woman but DD and kill her, so he took her captive. At some point she somehow convinced him to let her use the phone to let her the 9. 1. 1 dispatcher know that she was bleeding out. He had shot her. She kept saying this nice man is helping me. He has been so helpful, but we need some help. But he's been so helpful, and the dispatcher would say does the man have you now? Are you taken captive and she'd respond by saying yes, that's him. He's been saving my life, he's here with me now. She made him believe that she was going to pose him as being the hero. As soon as the ambulance showed up, so did the FBI. Amazing. Not an operator, but I worked at Domino's for a while and had an interesting experience. The customer ordered online, and ordered 10 cokes and nothing else. It shows on the Maca line, bit in bright red saying, no makeable items on this order, just to let you know it actually came through. I checked the delivery tag, and there were driver notes saying to call the police, he has drugs and guns. Naturally, I called, and they sent someone out, but to call the officer if we heard anything else. A couple hours go by, and we got the exact same order, for the same address, but a different name and call back number. We called the officer, who told us he would check it out again, but unfortunately, I don't know what happened, but after the second order, we all started thinking it was some kind of prank. Bro, at first I thought this had something to do with that Tumblr post where the guy bought like 7 cokes as a joke. And apparently there have been cases where this has happened and there was a legit situation. But the fact there was a second order honestly makes this seem more prankish. The other day someone called 9. 1. 1 and I heard a commotion and someone saying help then disconnected and wouldn't answer when I called back. It was a cell phone so it's not like I can just send the officers to a house to check up. I start a process of trying to contact the caller's provider, Verizon, T-Mobile ETC, to see where they live. After a few minutes the number called back and he said it was an accident and told me where he lived, so I sent the guys to do a welfare check. It turns out he hit the emergency button on his iPhone while bringing in the groceries with his wife and was asking for help to get the keys from his pocket and the front door open. Unfortunately I have to assume the worst with every call unfortunately stuff like this is pretty common. As a 9, 1, 1 dispatcher for over 30 years now, I can say so many of you are misinformed. In 30 years I've had one person try to order pizza. This is by no means something they tell you to expect. You have to pray the dispatcher you get things to ask if you realize you called 9. 1, 1 and then asks yes or no questions. I've been mom a couple times. However in numerous small towns and counties, you will have people answering with little to no training. Some states have required tests, others don't. Most larger cities have their own training programs. A lot of times the new dispatcher is at the mercy of how well the person assigned to train them does the job. It's sad really. Couple gets in a fight. The woman convinces the husband to let the kid stay the night elsewhere. He agrees. Woman calls 9. 1. 1 pretending it is the other mom. I take the call. It's obviously very busy so I send police to respond. They do and discovery it is a physical domestic. Back in the day one that got me was a mom calling a mom making sure their son could spend the night because she and the husband were having a date night. I could hear him feed her what to say we're going out to eat and then a late movie and won't be home until late. He has everything for school and so on. It was 8pm on a Tuesday and they both worked. Smaller town. Frequent problems. So it all sounded like BS. Her face was bruised everywhere. This ended up being his third domestic conviction and he spent 5 years in prison. 
Third conviction and only 5 years. Sheesh. For UK users of Reddit, please be aware, if you are in danger and unable to speak to the operator, egg, for fear of being found, you can press 55 whilst on the line and the operator will realize your plight and send help. I used to install security camera systems, mostly commercial accounts like banks, schools, hospitals and police stations but also homes. When teaching them how to operate their system, they had to choose a safe word to give the operator in case of a false alarm which often happens. In the event of an emergency or hostage type situation we would teach them to intentionally give the wrong safe word. The operator is trained to ask for the safe word again for verification and they would again give the wrong safe word. The operator would then say something like thank you very much Mr or Mrs X and hang up and then immediately dispatch the police. The one my family and I use is to use a pet name that we never actually use in real conversation. Not any name in particular, just one we never actually call each other. My mom came up with this, or someone told it to her, dunno, when I was a kid and kinda drilled it into us. It's not specifically if you need help, just if you feel unsafe for whatever reason but aren't comfortable saying it out loud at that moment. Hearing it used kinda pulls you into the moment and makes you start checking out everybody around and scanning for exits and stuff. My wife and our kids use the same system. There's a guy I used to work with who called everybody dude, and this isn't one we've ever really used regularly. For the first couple of weeks I worked with him I'd get a little nervous when he talked to me, and I'm pretty sure this is why. I listened to Crime Junkies a podcast where a woman talked to a 911 operator for 20 minutes while sleeping next to the guy holding her captive and physically abusing her. Pretty wild. This one girl was being held hostage and she managed to call 9. 1, 1, and tap SOS in Morse code. The operator kept asking if everything was okay and then he she realized what was going on. The woman was rescued and the hostage takers are now serving time. 9, 1, 1 dispatcher here. It's not very common at all that you have a situation where people have to get creative. Though something I didn't expect to get was pizza courier service drivers, DoorDash, Grubhub, etc. Asking for welfare checks on their customers because things didn't seem right in the home. One such example was a pizza delivery guy saying that there was a male that accepted the order but there were kids in the background that looked miserable and dirty. Nor did they looked bathed. When one kid tried to come to the door, the male screamed cussed at the kid and pushed them away. I didn't end up finding out the outcome of our contact with that address as that's just the nature of the job. Often times. But I'm glad pizza bro reached out. Another example was a package delivery guy that delivered guns to a couple that ran a commercial arms business out of their home. He advised that he made weekly deliveries of large amounts of weapons to them but this time, the female half that normally accepted the packages wasn't there and the front door was open. She's always been reliable, the same time every week for months but now this open door and her car is here but I'm knocking and yelling her name. Nothing. Unfortunately I don't have a satisfying conclusion to that one either. I don't even know if we made contact with her. Such is the life of a dispatcher. I read a story once about a woman and her child who were kidnapped and she managed to call 9 one, one, while in the car with the kidnappers. She gave the operator hints about her situation by just screaming at her captors while revealing stuff about her surroundings. Like, oh my god, where are you taking me? We just passed I-49. Are we going north? What's happening? Where are you taking me and my baby she's lucky the operator didn't dismiss it as a prank call, but I guess they must have training for those kinds of situations. My stepmom was a flight attendant for United Airlines. In the three days that airlines were shut down United issued a directive that before each flight the crew would determine a code word. This was to happen until all of the cockpit doors could be better secured. If one of the FARs called that code word to the cockpit, he would immediately turn on the FARs and seatbelt sign. And the FARs would usher people to their seats immediately because one minute after that call, the pilot was going to roll the plane over. The thought was simply that anybody still standing was a terrorist. That is kind of awesome. Not an operator, but my mum called me and said just wanted to see how you are and that everything here is fine. I knew immediately that everything wasn't fine. In my family it is automatically assumed that everything is fine unless told otherwise. So her specifically saying that triggered alarm bells. 
found her with her face black and blue. That must have been really hard for you. I just want to post this in case anyone needs it. There are apps that look like news apps that will alert the police and someone of your choosing without making any calls or sounds. They are specifically designed for domestic violence situations. Please keep yourself safe. The pizza method was taught to my group while we were in training. One of the operators had realized that a woman who had called for pizza was in a dangerous situation and he adapted wonderfully. I can't remember the exact details of the call, but he was able to get information on weapons and stuff by asking her what kind of toppings she wanted rather than putting her in a position where she would say something to put her in more danger. After the event was submitted to the officer, there was a return call from the same number and he answered as the local pizza place instead of XX County 9. 1. 1 and it was the guy calling to make sure the woman actually ordered a pizza. I no longer work there, but the operator received an award for his quick thinking and I believe he's still there. This mouse is looking for friends in the comments comment mouse boy to befriend him. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.